<clears throat> All right, everyone's favorite, um, roofs. And roofs are, I think, the most difficult part of a building design. I think they're the part that really, though, defines the building um, overall, the, the overall architectural style of the building. Uh, so if you're new to this, uh, the first thing you do have to do is familiarize yourself with different types of roofs. Um, <clears throat> in this building, for instance, I'm going to do two sets of videos because you do want to learn how to do both a hip and a gable roof. Um, and I can't decide. I think I'll start with the gable. Um, but you can see the difference between the two. The end of a gable is flat, whereas a hip is going to always pitch towards the center or the ridge. The ridge is the highest point of the roof. Um, and the second thing you want to do in conjunction with that is, and let me mention also, you can mix um, you can take a gable, like a, a projected gable like this, that could be a portion of a hip. Um, so you can mix and match those as, you, as you'd like to. Second thing is uh, roof pitches don't exist. We don't just make them up as we go along. We use uh, specific rises and runs, okay? Um, and the, the rise is always the height per run and the run is always 12 inches. Okay, so this is a good one because it shows you every 12 inches I go over, it can go up however many, okay? We don't get into 2.2 roof pitches or 3.5 roof pitches. Um, and the last thing you do want to think about when you're designing a roof is how, you know, how steep is it? Sometimes it's for aesthetics, but you know, why do houses in Florida, California, Arizona, why do they have three and two and sometimes one pitch roofs, okay? They don't have snow load. Um, so here up in Illinois in the, in the northern part of the country, Midwest, wherever you have snow, um, you do want to typically go, we say usually higher than a three or a four minimum. We kind of want to be up here in a five or above range. And that's because uh, it, not only will the snow sit longer on a lower pitch because it's closer to flat, um, you also have to do a lot of weatherproofing uh, to accommodate that snow, um, which makes sometimes a three pitch the same cost to build as a six pitch. Uh, when I say six pitch, I mean 612, okay? But uh, when we're in construction and architecture, we, we say that often, okay? Um, so I've got my buildings uh, all aligned so that it's like each side is adjacent to its next side. I determined for this, and I had to look at it based on this, that I wanted to target somewhere around an 812 roof pitch, okay? Um, and so when you're doing that, the first thing you would do is you would just draw a line and you could do this in inches or you could do it in feet. So eight inches or eight feet or 12 inches or 12 feet. Um, so I just go up and I say, okay, I want this to be uh, eight feet, which is 96 inches of rise for every 12 feet of run. If I connect the dots, and that gives me an 812 uh, roof pitch. All right, so that's a goner. And I'm going to use this line. I'm going to cannibalize this, but I um, I'm going to come back here before I do anything else, and I'm going to draw some text. And I'm going to say that is eight. And I guess my text is so small right now. I can't even see it, so I'll say the times 50. I want to make that text much bigger. I don't know where it's at. It's micro text. All right. You know what I'm going to do here instead is I'm just going to go borrow some text somewhere else on the drawing. Here, I already did this here, so I'll take this and I'll copy it. I, I must have not set up my uh, text settings on this drawing file yet. Um, text settings typically for an architectural drawing. Um, four is a good number to to go off of and now you can see I lost my uh, my little diagram there so again if I go up um, 96 I go over 144 and then I connect the dots okay so I'm going to move my number these always go on the inside of your little triangle and I'm going to go ahead and copy that to here. And all I got to do is change that because that is a 12. And this is a 8. 
Okay. Um, all parking this again, if I come up here right now, this is just guiding me through a roof design. These locations are not permanent in any way. Okay. Um, I kind of always like to look at the front and the left side or the south and the west elevation. But the other thing, if I have my choices, I like to look at the widest part of the elevation first. Okay. And in this case, the widest part, <clears throat> because I'm going to incorporate incorporate a shed roof up in this covered area and this covered area. So the widest portion then becomes this wall between this corner of the soffit and this back corner of the soffit. So where does that correspond to? It corresponds to right here. Um, if you wanted to, you could mirror this. Sometimes that's not a bad idea if you're going to be using it over and over again. And I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. And I'm going to bring it up to, again, we said this is the widest portion of the wall of the whole building. And I'm going to go ahead and take this one and move it to that widest portion of the wall. Okay. And I've done that. So this would now determine the highest point of my building overall. Okay. So that's it. When I've determined the highest point of that building, and I like that, I think that that's a good looking, uh, good looking angle for the size of the building. So when I'm done, I'm going to go and just shoot that line, just like we did with all your windows and doors and things like that. Just shoot it all the way across the drawing. Okay. Now I'm going to still pay a little bit of attention to this one, but in order to do that, I have to come out to the front of the building. Okay, because again, you can see I have a gable in the front that's projecting out this way. So now what I have to do is draw the same thing over here. And I decided I'm gonna stick with the exact same 812 roof pitch just to keep it simple. And I think it would be uh, complimentary in this case. Okay, and what you're gonna find out here is that the pitch that this is going to wind up lower. Uh, let's mirror this. So I might actually make a change. Move this guy over here to the end. Okay, so now you can see that the ridge, right, the top, the highest point where these two lines are intersecting, is a couple of feet below the ridge this way. And I want to run a little test because what we've already said was this portion and this portion are going to be a shed roof, which means that they pitch from somewhere up here down in one direction only. And if I cruise over this way, I want to make sure that I'm going to have enough room <clears throat> to make that pitch, right? That Let's say if I made this, a 312 that's going to come up somewhere in here and you might want to go back and look at your um, <clears throat> roof pitch diagram and see how is that going to work and i think a 312 will work just fine okay um, so again <clears throat> we'll leave it alone for right now so when you're done with that again you can just mark out any of these intersections up here and what we've done is we've set ourselves up for um, two, um, what's the word, um, heights, an overall roof height. This being this maximum overall roof height right here, right? And this lower one becoming this maximum overall roof height, okay? So we're looking right now at the, let's see, this would be the right side of the building. Uh, we started again with this being the widest section, which would be from here to here. You can see, even though these two things are lined up, okay, that was not correct. This was correct right here because it lines up with the widest point being from here to here. So this was already kind of offline, and I'm not going to worry about these until I have finalized most of what's down here. So if you can start with that, <clears throat> again, determining roof shape let's go back to here 
you can go ahead and determine what kind of overall shape of the roof you want first. You can then go ahead and determine what pitches you think would be uh, suitable or aesthetically pleasing. And then you can go ahead and you always have to use two, you know, use this as a reference to determine which way things are pitching, sloping, and what these highest points are. Okay. And then you're going to go and work in the other direction, which is to, um, to determine what the overall heights are. Okay. So this being this front gable never gets higher than this. This being this top of this gable never gets higher than that. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and start getting rid of some, some uh, elements. This also should extend. This is why I like to extend stuff out in space so I can deal with it um, kind of un unobstructed and, and then uh, make up my, my final decisions when I go. Okay, These vertical lines right here, we know that this is going to end right here at that edge of the roof. All right. So give that a whirl, at least like with the beginning setup stuff, determine the roof pitch, determine the roof shape. Um, try to go ahead and work off of two faces or two elevations of the building to get to here and you should be well on your way.